record. Uh, yeah, I actually watched it. Um, the White House released the unedited version. I watched the unedited version over the weekend. What uh, what the, what did you see? Um, I watched the edited version last night on 60 Minutes. I had heard about the unedited version, and you know, it's a. It, it, I didn't see the unedited, so I don't know what 60 Minutes cut out. But I tell you what, uh, the chick that was interviewing Bush, I mean, you mean Trump? Um, yeah, Jesus, man, what is wrong with me? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's it's six forty five in the morning. That's what's wrong. <laughs> uh, I guess. Um, On this episode of the John nineteen eleven podcast, the UK ambassador story, the Jeff Quinn estate, the Graven and Kasich need money, the agony of defeat. Okay, good morning, everybody. This is uh, Marky and Freeze, and this is episode 190 of the John 1911 podcast. So this will be the inaugural inaugural uh, adi- full-blown edition of the new podcast software, and hopefully, um, you know what? Hold on. Yeah. And it's recording. No, yeah, never mind. Never mind. You know what? This is new software. So I was looking. I was like, wait a minute. Is this recording? It, it is recording. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's new software. So um, yeah. you actually sound pretty, you sound really good. I think your mic – remember how we were having some issues with your microphone? Um, uh, I'm on the internal mic right now. I tried to flip it over to the uh, to the Yeti, but uh, mm-hmm. it, it the Yeti for some weird reason is not working. Okay. Um, well, well, we'll figure it out. I'll have to come over and – We'll do all that. So anyway, before we went live, you were talking about uh, le- the Leslie Stahl interview with Donald Trump, and I saw the unedited version, and you saw the edited version, and you thought, what about Leslie Stahl? Uh, she's a nasty, snarky bitch. <laughs> I mean, if you want to just put it in plain words, I mean, you know, she was, I mean, every question was a, uh, a gotcha type of question. I mean, she... And I mean, she really wasn't even there to uh, to give an honest interview. And then, you know, she's trying to debunk the whole fake news thing, and she's like, "Well, you know, sixty minutes doesn't put any any, you know, because when they were talking about like the uh, the Hunter Biden crap, they just kind of touched on it a little." You know, she's like, well, 60 Minutes doesn't air, you know, or talk about anything that's not verified to be proven true. And it's like, oh, that's a bold-faced fucking lie. Yeah. (laughs) 60 Minutes, I mean, look at just in the past three years of the shit they ran with Trump that, you know, I I mean. Hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. Off the top of my head, I could be mistaken because we have not prepared for this conversation. I believe it was 60 Minutes had gotten trouble for faking video claiming that truck that four trucks would explode or something or catch on fire uh i you know i don't know i i don't recall that <laughs> i think they but, got sued over that but i, think I it mean was 60 minutes maybe not but, but look i mean it's totally believable that a ford truck would explode and catch on fire if you just look at it meanly <laughs> don't make me spit, spit <laughs> coffee all over my computer no um you know, I mean, but for her to make that statement, and I'm sure probably most of the people listening to this, have, if they didn't watch it, they've seen snippets of it. But for her to make that statement, it's just like, seriously, you can't actually believe the garbage that just blew out of your fucking mouth. They do. And that's, you know, I mean, look, I've kind of come to a real, I mean, I guess I've always known this, but sometimes I get, I get hot under the collar with Trump because sometimes he, he, um, you know, I feel, I feel like a lot of times Donald Trump, when he is either talking or doing things that we, we, and we all see this, everybody listen to this podcast, whether you agree with what John 1911 staff have to say, or whether you're, you know, of a different political persuasion, everybody agrees that a lot of times Donald Trump has a lot of missed opportunities. But the reality is, it's Donald Trump's behavior and his approach to the media that actually, number one, keeps him, quote, alive, and number two, opens up a lot of opportunities to call out a lot of this bullshit. So for all the all the shots you don't, he doesn't get to take. He doesn't take that we feel like he should take. He takes plenty. Oh yeah. Yeah, No yeah. And and the and and the media. I mean, like this whole. I've never been a, 
How, how do I say this? For a long time now, I've been not happy with the media and not in the way that most people are. And what I mean is, I don't know if we've said this, I don't think I've said this on a pod, but you and I have talked about it. If all you watch was Fox News and Sean Hannity, in 2012, you would not understand how Barack Obama won re-election and how Mitt Romney lost. You would, you just would, just would not understand it. It's, you've seen the news, you've seen the reporting, and you're like, how the hell this man won re-election? If all you watch is MSNBC and Rachel Maddow, you would not understand how the Russian story was all fake and Donald Trump has not been impeached. And my point is, these are both supposed to be news agencies, and they're not. They're prep rallies for sports teams, and it's not actual analysis. Mm -hmm. And I don't think really – I don't think going forward the news as we've commonly recognized it is viable. I think people should start getting their news from different sources. I know for a fact some people actually get their news from us, as scary as that sounds – but I mean, well, no, I mean, you know. but but here's the thing: um, we don't. I I don't want to. I don't want to slam or chastise any uh, people on the 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 right. You know, like uh, like Tucker Carlson, Sean Hannity, those guys. They're great. I I like them. Um, and you know, but but the thing is. If that's all you listen to, and and we're not that type of a person, you know, we don't, we're not a pep rally for all Republicans. I mean, you know, we'll call out a Republican as quick as we'll call out a Democrat, you know, but like, like I, I don't watch mainstream media. I don't watch Fox News. I don't watch CNN. I don't watch MSNBC. I mean, I will catch snippets of stuff and, and there's. Like, I watched 60 Minutes last night, uh, which was the first time I watched 60 Minutes in years, because I pull what I want off the internet. I can't sit there and spend three hours a day watching mainstream media. I might as well just freaking put a gun in my mouth and blow my brains out. It's exhausting, you know? It is. That's Danny's job. That's Danny's job. <laughs> you know, yeah. but, but the thing is, like, you know... Um, you know how I feel about the Blaze guy. <laughs> you feel about Glenn Beck the way I feel about John Kasich. Okay, now here's the thing. With that being said, do I watch his video clips and listen to some of his podcasts? Yes, I do. Because even though I'm... Look, the guy's very smart. He's a brilliant guy. I just can't handle mixing you know, religion and politics together. And he, I find him exhausting, but he does cover a lot of stuff and he's good at it. And I do watch some of the stuff. There's just a like lot a, of smart people out there. You're yeah. very smart. It's being smart is no, if, if smart is the bar, I mean, look, Rachel Maddow is very smart and people that are on the right or Fox News fans or our fans, a lot of them don't want to hear that. Rachel Maddow is wicked smart. That's not enough. Being smart is not enough. No, no, it's not. You know, and um, but you know, as I was saying, you know, even though I don't watch uh, the Blaze TV on a regular basis, uh, the same way I don't watch MSNBC or CNN, but you know, hey, every once in a while I will jump in and grab a uh, video clip of uh, the Morning Joe show or The View, even though. I even hate to admit admit that I'll watch a video clip from The View, but I'll tell you what, those crotchety bitches over at The View, it's good to get the insanity from the left. And you have to know how your enemy is thinking and what they're doing. It is. You know? But the, the, the problem, the fundamental problem is, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I'll talk about The View. The thing is, if you watch The View and you watch, you, this is true on the right as well. But if you – just for this conversation, if you watch The View, you watch, watch Rachel Maddow and you read The Daily Kos, which is a left-wing website, you think you have got a wide perspective of news sources and you don't. And, no, and, and, not at you know, all. But like going back to Leslie Stahl, Leslie Stahl is 78 years old. Is she, she looks that great. Old? Yeah, I, w- I, w- I wouldn't have pictured her uh, knocking on the door of 80. I really wouldn't She have. is. She is – 
older than Trump. She is older than dirt. Just kidding. Um, but here's the thing, you know, like her, did she, I don't remember. Did she make comments about masks in during the interview? Yeah, she, she did. Well, um, here's the thing she, th- that happened on interview, but after the interview was over and the cameras are off, she's walking around in the white house without a mask on and all of her staff members and the yeah. white house got a picture of her and like you bitch. Yeah. You fake fucking bitch. And yeah. the thing is, Leslie Stahl thinks, you know, Leslie, I mean, she, she is a dinosaur from a different time and she's on 60 minutes. And when you and I were kids, dude, 60 minutes was like people, people today don't realize the closest example that, that they would have of this in the media today would be uh, like you would read on the internet, like Tucker Carlson has new video of X coming out on his episode tonight. Everybody's like, oh my God, oh my God, what's he got? What's he got? 60 Minutes used to be that. 60 Minutes could destroy people, destroy businesses, you know, expose. 60 Minutes was almost like Project Veritas. Okay. They would do undercover videos. They would do all kinds of stuff. So back in... in People under 30 won't even understand this. Well, some will, but back pre-cable, pre, you know, back in the oldie times, you know, back when us dinosaurs were young, <laughs> okay, you had two programs that came on once a week. And, okay, you came home from work, you know, family sat down, ate dinner, watched the nightly news, whatever, and that was local, and they covered a little international, and it is what it is. But the big news show where you got all the juice and it just didn't cover, you know, headlines was 60 Minutes. And that's what you watched each week to get your broad, you know, you know your, your big news things. Yeah. Okay, the other show was Wide World of Sports that came on on Sunday. Because, you know, you had three channels on your TV. You would catch a sporting event here and there. But, you know, when the Olympics was on, they're the ones that covered it. NASCAR racing, by the way, the only station that covered any NASCAR racing back in, like, the 70s and the 80s was Wide World of Sports. And they only covered, like, three races out of the year. It Was Wide World of Sports the one that used to do the thrill of victory, the agony of defeat intro? And they would show the skier, like, bouncing down. Yeah. like, okay, for the kids today... If you get on the internet, if you get on Instagram and you uh, you want to see videos of like skateboarders, for every skateboarder that lands a neat trick, there's probably a hundred thousand of them that break their face. And you like to see people crash trying to do stuff. Wild World of Sports on network television in the 70s would, they would do this intro and it was the thrill of victory and they would show somebody doing this whatever great thing and then they would send the voice would go, the agony of defeat and you would yeah. see this skier cartwheeling down this mountain and that's the only time you would ever see anything like that yes. on network television because they knew that video since it was pre-recorded, they knew that person didn't die. Because if, if anything looked like somebody like was seriously crippled, injured, or possibly dead, it was immediately cut away. But because that video, they knew that this person ultimately, I don't think, ended up basically drinking out of a straw like uh, like uh, uh, Christopher Reeve. Um, <laughs> ah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> there's another reach back. Um, you know, they would show that. And that was like, I remember I used to, I, I used to, if I was a kid, if I had the ability to do slow mo and replay of the agony of defeat guy, I would have watched that over and over again, yeah. like a, like an Instagram video today. So yeah, it's but you know, <clears throat> but you know, I mean, that's just kind of the way it is. Um, you know, between you know those days and today. Um, now, uh, with that being said, getting back on our original topic, you know, um, in order to get a solid view, and look, people, I guess they know, or maybe they don't, they know that we differ on a lot of things. We look at different things in the media, like, um, and we don't always agree. I mean, off pod, we get into some pretty heated arguments. Yeah, we do. Well, you I'm know, sure we do. 
I mean, um, we're not that different politically. No, no, not politically. I'm not saying we're different politically. I mean, you know, of course, you would be the reincarnation of Che Guevara if we did differ politically. Oh, fuck you. But, <laughs> but, but no, it, it's it's on little things, you know, like um, uh, like like we got into a pretty uh, good argument on the COVID things a while back. Um, you know, with vaccines and masks and, oh, yeah. and, oh, and we, got we, huge, we, we got a huge fucking blowout about that. Yeah. Um, we, uh, we, uh, I, I don't Specifically agree. Specifically if the, if the listener, well, we're not going to go into it now because it might turn us into a dumpster fire podcast. We got into an argument about Bill Gates and vaccines. And we yeah. You know, that. and, but you know, and this is stuff that the people listening to our pods don't get. I mean, I, I'm assuming they think that you know we we agree a hundred percent on everything and um, in that we, which is not even the case. Uh, we totally disagree on polling numbers and things of that nature. You know. Um, well, you know what? Hold on, that's a good segue because we can't go an hour and a half today because uh, we've got a, it's Monday morning. I think Amy Coney Barrett's going to get nominated today, and the uh, the armory is going to be very busy this morning. So today, Amy Coney Barrett will is probably going to get confirmed. Yeah, to the Supreme Court. Is it today? The, I thought it, I thought it was tomorrow, but it could be today. I think it's today. Uh, okay, today's uh, Monday, the twenty sixth of October. So we're nine yeah. or eight days from the election. So, um, did you see what Frank Luntz said on Fox News about the poll about the pollster business? I did not. Frank Luntz came out and said, if. The polling numbers are wrong. My business is going to be destroyed. Like he wasn't saying it, my industry or something. What he was basically saying is, if basically he says if they get a repeat of 2016, again with their polling numbers, Mm -hmm. they are just they said their business is going to be wiped out. And this is something you and I talked about. The polling numbers don't make any sense right now. Like I mean, I'm gonna. Tell the listener here, like we're both sitting in Ohio right now, and supposedly, magically, the polls are tightening in Ohio. You know, I guess between Trump and Biden, I don't even know supposedly who's who's supposed to be leading in Ohio according to the polls, but I can tell everybody pretty confidently Donald Trump was never not in front in Ohio. Donald Trump will win Ohio. I mean— I could be wrong. I'm not a pollster. And like, you know, the day after the election, Donald Trump didn't win fucking Ohio. But I'm not seeing it. And it's like, I've never seen any chance that Biden was going to win Ohio. And I I agree with that 100%. But I think right now, uh, the the mainstream polls that are out there show Biden ahead in Ohio by a couple points. And I I don't see that. I don't don't see see it at all. I don't see it. But you know what? Now, hold on. I guess in defense of pollsters and I guess also in defense of, you know, the Trump organization, the Trump campaign, I mean, Pence and Biden, I mean, I'm sorry, Pence and Trump have both been in Ohio within the past uh, probably four days. Like, yeah. And, you know, and while we're on it, okay, like, I'm sure it's seven o'clock in the morning on Monday. I'm. I'm pretty certain that the Biden campaign has not put their lid on the day for the, yet. It was like, hey, we got nothing to do today. It's only like the election's five minutes away. Donald Trump, like you'll you'll flip on the news or you'll see a website or go whatever. Like Donald Trump is doing a rally in like Arizona. I'm just making this up, and you'd be like, oh, Donald Trump's in Arizona today. Whatever. Okay, yeah, great. And then like later that night, you'll be like, Donald Trump's in North Carolina, and you're like, motherfucker, he is he is doing two a days. That man is 74 years old. He's flying across the country. Like, I mean, look, win or lose, I got to give it to Donald Trump. Donald Trump in this election has been very impressive. Oh, he has. I mean, I tell you what, the guy's got energy like you wouldn't believe. I mean, he's all over the place. Healthiest president in history, healthiest president ever, perfect health. It was you a per, it was a per, it was a it was a perfect physical. <laughs> <laughs> it was it, it was the the physical that uh that uh, uh judges all other physicals yes yeah yeah so <laughs> but uh yeah. yeah i mean it's just you know like the but the polls and trump and biden like well i heard today danny sent this yesterday you know i hate this to have to be a heavy duty political podcast we'll have to do some gun stuff but 
you know, I guess um, it's been reported, your friend and mine, uh, John Kasich is being considered by the Biden transition team for a cabinet post. Sure. We talked about that before. We knew that. I mean, that's no that's no shock or surprise. Um, you know, I mean, it, it's it's really not. Um, yeah. He'll be secretary of transportation or some bullshit. I mean, you know, I think if Biden wins, I think the only thing he's really qualified for is secretary to the uh, head dog catcher of the United States of America. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, John that guy's, Kasich. That guy's well, a chode. But here's the thing, you know, look, I haven't, I, if you, forget the polls, but if you look at the data, if you look at the behavior of people in the election right now, mm -hmm. I have not seen a bunch of Republicans breaking from Trump. Because, you know, like a, a sinking ship, you'll, you, you know, you'll start seeing a bunch of Republicans going, hey, you know, um, sorry about that Trump thing. I'm a moderate. You know, for example, like, yeah. um. Who, who's been? Uh, who's the guy from where? Joe Manchin's been again. Manchin's not a Republican, but Joe Manchin's a guy. If Trump was going to, if he thought Trump was going to lose, I don't know. May, maybe Joe Manchin would start this. You know, start you know eking out a little voice to stake out a position post Trump. Yeah. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen a lot of these never Trump or, uh, Republicans. Like, where's Mitt Romney coming out and running his fucking mouth? Uh, you know, I heard. I heard something about him uh, possibly getting a cabinet position under Biden if he wins. Jesus Christ. Well, um, you're starting to see it. Well, like, uh, there's a, uh, okay, all of, everybody everybody listening to this podcast will know who this person is. Even if I say their name, they don't recognize it. Admiral McRaven, the Navy SEAL commander for the Bin Laden raid. Um, he is a huge Democrat. And I think a lot of people are kind of surprised to hear that. I think uh, people in our demo tend to, they want to assume that these high-ranking military officers are Republican and actually they're pro-gun and like believe everything you believe because they project onto them. And McRaven, McRaven would take your AR-15s. McRaven take your magazines. Admiral McRaven, man, talk about thirsty. He, he has been trying to get into a Democratic administration since he retired he campaigned so hard to try to become Hillary Clinton's vice presidential nominee. He liked, he was, he wanted that. But, you know, she gave it to uh, uh, the troll looking guy from Virginia. So, but McRaven's <laughs> come out and staked the position. Uh, McRaven comes out and endorses uh, Joe Biden. You know, it's like it was on some of the news outlets. And it's like, why is this in the news? It's like, oh, wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's right. McRaven's looking for a job, it's a job interview. Yeah. Hey guys, um, I'm public, and um, please consider me for the transition. I'd love to have a job in your administration. That's I'm exactly still not. I'm, I'm still not invalid. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean. Oh, did you hear about the coyote thing at the debate? The coyote thing at the debate. You uh, didn't watch a debate, and I um, did. I did watch the debate. Donald Trump talked about. Uh, coyotes bringing kids across the oh, border. Oh, yeah, when they were talking about the cages and shit. And Dude. the 500 kids and all that crap. <clears throat> you know, and, you know, the Biden campaign's like, well, you know, no, they came across with their parents and you separated them. And, and the Trump campaign's like, or Trump presidents is like, no, we did DNA tests. These people are not fucking related. These are coyotes bringing kids across the border. And you didn't see what happened on Twitter, did you? No, I don't follow Twitter. Oh my god, dude! They called it the blue checkmark brigade. All of these blue checkmark Democrats and liberals, all up and down the internet, were all literally like some of them are elected politicians, and they're like, "What does a coyote? How does a coyote carry a whole human being across the border?" They literally did not understand. <clears throat> oh, they thought it was a real coyote. Yes. Oh my God! Really? Yes. It's uh, it, and I thought that did not that got a lot. So, of, so, so they're all going, "Oh, Donald Trump's a moron because coyotes can't carry human beings." Wow. Yes, and it that's was, amazing. Mm -hmm. And this is an example of people giving hot takes of shit they don't know what's going on, and you know, we can all we can all be subject to it, you know. Um, and it was just. But, but think about this for a minute. Think about the coyote thing, okay? 
I mean, look, we live in Ohio. We don't live in a border town. We don't live in a border state. I mean, like, you know, we, we have a fair amount of illegal immigrants up here now in Ohio. We have a yeah. lot of them uh-huh. that never used to be here. But we don't we don't live with life down there with all the all the accoutrement that comes with, you know, all the bullshit that happens on that border. But the blue checkmark brigade, the Illuminati of the Democratic Party, these people that are so smart, they had no idea what that word meant. We've See, been I don't, debating I, we've been debating this border pretty heavily for since the Bush administration. I mean, I don't even see how it's possible for these people not to know what a coyote is. That is an ex- that is truly one of those canary in the coal mine things that I think is the difference between the rest of America and the elite people on the coast. They are so disconnected from what's going on. They have no idea what I mean, that's shocking to me. Oh, I mean, it's not it, funny. It, yeah. It's scary. Yeah. You know, it, it's like, like they it's like they they want to they want to talk about how bad the border wall is and and all this shit. But look, what kind of a grasp do you even really have on illegals coming into this country if you don't know what a coyote is? Oh, it gets even better than that, dude. All these people, uh, the do-gooders, you know, that there's the morally the morally just people who are better than all of us talk about the ills of women and children being abused. They're against, quote, human trafficking. Like, that's wrong, and we have to do all this stuff. <clears throat> but they have no idea what human trafficking is on the Mexican border. And it's yeah. even better. <clears throat> like, I remember this story. It, it, it made some news, but then it kind of goes away. Um, like a lot of it does, because it really isn't news. It's more chewing gum for the masses. Yeah. Uh, there was a girl that came across the board, a young girl, like, you know, they intercepted her, you know, uh, Border Patrol. <clears throat> and they did a, um, I guess they do pregnancy tests, or they do they do these tests on these uh, people. You know, they want to find out they're pregnant. They do, it's, a, it's, a, it's an exam, okay? Yeah. This girl was like, I don't know, like this girl was young, like 9 or 10 or 11. Like she wasn't even 15. She was like a child child. And they said she had the sperm of like six or eight guys in her. What? Mhm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So here my so here's my point. The pe- the it, these people are so disconnected from what's really going on. How can they they don't want to face what's going on out here. No, they don't want. To, I mean, that's. I mean, it's, it, when people talk about when people talk about like the coming civil war, United States, that coyote thing, it to me is a huge red flag of what's coming. If they don't even, we're not even on the same universe here, and we're not in different worlds here. Like they don't even know what that is. That was so scary to me. It was like, wow, holy shit. And the thing is, the worst part about it was not only was the ignorance of these people, you know, the blue checkmark brigade, but it was the arrogance of, of their ignorance. They don't yeah. know what they don't know, but they're arrogant about it. They're like, yeah. it's like, whoa. Like if somebody all of a sudden like, yeah, you know, I'm watching some, some thing. You know, let's say Rachel Maddow and I don't know, Bill Maher, and they're talking and they're having some argument about something and all of a sudden one of them goes... Yeah, what about the riboflavin factor? And I'm watching this, and I'm like, I don't know what the fuck that means. I better Google riboflavin factor in this fucking story. But no, and if I was a blue checkmark person on Twitter, I can just get on the internet and be like, what the fuck, the riboflavin, that's bullshit. That's fucking something in food. It's like, you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> oh my, it's, it's just yeah. the, ar- the arrogance of it is what's... The arrogance well, of Leslie Stahl, the well, arrogance of the media, the arrogance of these people, that's what drives Donald Trump. But, but, you know, I've noticed this through, and I'm sure this isn't across the board, but I know quite a few uh, Democrats, um, leftists, some of them are even full-blown socialists. But here's the one thing that I've always um, got from them, is they always think that they're smarter than you because you're a Republican or a right-wing conservative. They or always or you're a Christian. Yeah, 
but they Real. always, yeah. Um, I got a socialist friend of mine who's an atheist because you know why not, and he thinks anyone that's a Christian is stupid. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because it's easier for him to do that. Yeah, but but I found that tends to be the 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 thing on the left, and I'm sure there's people on the right that are the same way, but a lot of the people on the left think they're really stupid, um, that or were really stupid, you know, um, and. I love how when you engage them, like I, I have a, a person that I have to deal with because uh, he's a family member um, on a regular basis, and he will argue politics with certain people that he thinks, well, that not he thinks, he knows he can beat them in an argument. But when I walk into the room, there's very little politics talked about because he knows I will burn his ass every fucking time. Because <clears throat> you come to play. That is true. Freeze, yeah. Freeze is one of these guys. He can roll out of bed, not even be awake yet. And, you know, AOC could come at him with some bullshit fucking thing and he, he'd fucking just cut her in half. Oh, I mean, I, I am a burn the house down kind of guy. Yeah, that's true. That's you true. know, I'm I'm not Mitt Romney. I'm not John McCain. Who, oh, no. oh, I I I didn't I didn't put my dog on the roof and and drive 300 miles and kill it. Oh well, if you're going to argue the point fast enough, I guess I did. Oh no, fuck you. No, Barack Obama. Your mom was a freaking communist sympathizer. I mean, you know, I don't give a shit if she died of cancer. The, the, you know, I mean, um, you know, <laughs> you know she. She, you'll, you know, she. You'll go there. You'll, you will oh, yeah. go there. Like, will he go there? Oh yeah, he'll go. Oh there. yeah, I'll go there in a heartbeat. Just stand here, eat the popcorn, watch this. This is going to get yeah. good. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I will burn your fucking house down if that's cool. what it takes. But uh, you know. it's uh, it's interesting. Like you said, you talk about you're like you know you got a socialist friend. Mm -hmm. Just think yeah. about that for a minute. Like we never used to have people that would say they were socialists. Like oh, well, but, like but no, but someone had said that. Here's the here's the beauty of it. He doesn't actually think he's a socialist. He will actually tell you he's pretty middle of the road, mm. and he'll be like, "Well, I vote for the best person qualified." And I'm like, "I'm, I'm not going to mention his name, but I'll be like, when's the last time you voted for a Republican?'" Ronald Reagan. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Seriously, the last Republican, local, national, the last Republican you actually voted for was Ronald Reagan. Don't tell me you're middle of the road. I mean, you know, but in his mind, he actually does not believe. He actually kind of gets offended if you call him a socialist. But mm -hmm. it's like, you know, you know. I, the older I get and the more experienced I get, or maybe the more, the, 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 the more I recognize, the less I know as I get older, which I think is a, a thing a lot of people uh, experience. I've come to, I've come to understand an idea. I don't know if it's, I'm not, I can't really articulate it completely, but even it, everybody, I, I, every, I've come to believe everybody has a religion. Um, I think it's part of the human psyche. And even even though even people who say they don't have a religion, that's a religion. Well, I'll tell you uh, what, yeah. atheists almost treat atheism like a freaking religion. They do, and it is a religion. It's I mean, it's it's it there. It's this, you know, this this jihad, this this crusade they're on. This you know this you know a lot of human. I think I think to be a good human being and to be a uh, to be I don't know, a, a functioning member of any society, I think you have to have concepts outside of yourself. I can't all, you just can't walk through life about all about you. Like literally, I mean, you're a sociopath if you do. And, you know, a lot of these people who believe in big government, they just use big government as a replacement for their church, you know, or something to battle for, or something to, yeah. to you know, to morally, you know, as a lens to look through the world. And that's, almost what you're really dealing with here is you've got people that you know america was set up to have limited government limited uh 
you know, power of, of the state and, you know, and a federalist system, you know, individual states and, 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 and the government types, people that use government as a, as an identity, you know, communist, socialist, but, you know, really the modern liberals, you know, the solution to every problem in your life is more government intervention as opposed to, you know, you yeah. doing, doing something. And it's, it's just, it's a religious battle. I, really, yeah. I, 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 the, the older I, I get, the more I see it that way. Yeah, no, I, I don't disagree with you at all. I actually I actually agree with your analysis on that. So um, let's talk about something fun. Then, my, well, okay, you okay? Let's do a little gun stuff here. Obviously, you you remember who Jeff Quinn was? Jeff Quinn passed. He mm-hmm. had uh, is it gun gun blast? I believe was his YouTube channel. He passed. I think he had yeah cancer. Maybe I, I can't. I'm not really sure what he passed of. But uh, his COVID. estate, his Co- that he COVID. I think he died pre COVID. Um, <laughs> he um. His estate, they're selling, they're liquidating a lot of his gun collection. Mm, good um, stuff. And uh, I guess it's being handled by an 07 FFL, a manufacturer, like a small manufacturer, I believe in Texas, uh-huh. which is interesting because he's in, um, he's in Tennessee. Um, but uh, they worked out a deal and this company is going to be listing it on a uh, gun broker, but it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of guns. My understanding is, yeah, they showed up with a trailer. Um, and loaded it up. So I'm um, not unfamiliar with that concept. And um, uh, and uh, so if you are interested in uh, uh, some of Jeff Quinn's guns, um, apparently the family has found this 07 in Texas that Jeff Quinn, um, um, I guess they had a relationship with this company or person. They feel like they're honorable people and they want to give people a chance to uh, – to, uh, you know, if there's something of, of Mr. Quinn's that you would like to have, you will have an opportunity. I believe it's all being run through Gun Broker, so it's public, so everybody gets a chance. And also, um, the family did indicate that, you know, no worries. The family got first dibs, and, you know, there's a few things that they kept for themselves for sentimental reasons, whatever that would be. They didn't really disclose. So it's not like you're, you know, picking over the bones of, uh, uh, of Jeff Quinn's body. The family has already, you know, had their say. And so yeah. everything that's out there is good to go. If you want it, make a run at it. They would, you know, you're probably going to help the Quinn family and help them settle the estate. Oh, that's so good. that was kind of an interesting story. And um, I don't have it. I don't have the company off the top of my head. I'll, I'll link it in the podcast notes, in the show notes. Uh, yeah. We'll have, you know, we'll have uh, something, you know, over there. Um, oh, that's cool. Do you, I, I can't remember if we talked about this. On a sound test or off pod, because you know we've been there's so much going on. Do you remember the conversation we had about OnlyFans, and I didn't know yes. what that was. Like I yeah. didn't yeah. understand it was a website. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that was on a sound test, maybe. Yeah, I don't know if it got published because some of the sound tests did not get published. But um, Gosh darn it, if it wasn't that day, a story came out of Florida of one of these only fan, you know, dot company websites or girls, talent, like booty chick girls. I guess there was a home invasion at her home and um, uh, she's married. Um, she's got children or has a child at least, if not multiple children. She lives in Miami and um, because she's a only fans booty chick or something. Uh, there's cameras all throughout her house. So these guys burst in, I think her husband and their people, they're like in the front room watching television. It looks like a nice house too. Like, it's not like a little, like this only fans thing, this girl, I've never heard of her, but apparently they doing okay. And, um, mm. uh, you see the camera there's, there's camera, there's inside camera views in the living room. The, these people come in and like all of a sudden they're on them, you know, in the in the living room while they're watching television. And then the then they show the video camera of the woman. She's back in the bedroom. She's got on camera again because she wasn't prepared for this, but she's only fans, so maybe she was getting ready for work. She's got I don't know some kind of like normal sweatshirt thing on the top. The bottom is nothing but like booty lace bottom underwear. <laughs> and okay. you see her looking around the corner and she pulls out a gun and she starts engaging these home invaders in this gunfight in their house. You know, and um I was like, hmm, I guess if I'm ever gonna give any money to any any booty chicks, I guess it'll be the one that can that can win the gunfight, you know? Yeah. 
So, and so what was the ultimate outcome of the gunfight? She won. She Did. won. Nobody the 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 bad guys uh, the bad guys uh, lost. Uh, I don't think they all were gunned down. I think they ran. Yeah. But uh, uh, she won. And of Did, course, uh, no know, one some, got hurt in the house. Uh, the I, resident. I do not believe um, any of the good guys in this story. Uh, the booty chick family were injured. Um, um, uh, I, I, I'm not certain on the perpetrators. Uh, I'm sure that'll be adjudicated. They'll be caught. Uh, but, uh, it was, um, it was interesting. Of course, of, of course, hold on now. The internet expert brigade, everybody, I, dude, there's already people like, quote, she had bad tactics. Oh God. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you know, you know, you know what? I'll, I'll tell you how. You can tell anyone who says she has bad tactics is full of shit. She won. Mm -hmm. She won. That means whatever tactics she used, whether you deem them good or bad, was successful. Well, it's, also, it, if you look at the bad tactics, a lot of time what they don't like, it's not even necessarily her tactics. It's probably they don't like her gun handling for whatever because everybody's an expert. You know? Yeah, of it's, course. Mm-hmm. You know, and no one drops their gun like you did the other day. I haven't um, published. I haven't published that yet. But yeah, <laughs> I dropped my gun. I was uh, working out. I was doing sprints in the parking lot, and uh, clunk. I mean, it was like <laughs> clunk, clunk. And I was like, uh, "Was that my new expensive phone?" And like, I still hear the stuff in my ears. And I'm like, I turn around. It's like, Oh, there's the Wilson on the ground. <laughs> it's like, Oh, it's been a long time since I legit dropped a gun, but I have. And well, uh, yeah, that, I, yeah. I, you, 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 let me tell you a story about dropping a gun. <laughs> I don't think I've ever told you this story. Is this the motorcycle story? No. Okay. Um, back when I had my Jeep Wagoneer, this is going way back. I, I knew you when you had that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was, I was, I was actually going shooting. So I was loading up the gear in the back of the Wagoneer and my, uh, my Colt, my 1924 Colt mm -hmm. was in a soft case and I set it on the roof of the Wagoneer while I was loading up the rest of the gear. Well, shut up the Wagoneer, got into it, was, you know, pulled out of the driveway, was driving down my road. And, you know, if you if you go down my road, you know, there's a pretty steep hill at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> I and I just by sheer luck, I was as I was going down the road, you know, it turns to the right at the bottom. You know, and you check to the right, you know, because there's no stop sign. You know, there's mm -hmm. a stop sign on the, the, the coming, the merging part, but not mm -hmm. when it's you a come down. The... It's a three-way stop, but it's it's a three-way intersection, but it's not a three-way stop. Yeah. So, anyway, I'm looking to the left to make sure no one's going to blow through that stop sign because that happens. And as I'm sweeping back, I hit this rear view, the, or the side view mirror, and I see something fly off my roof. And I'm like, oh, fuck. So I go down to the next driveway, turn around, and come back. And if I wouldn't have been looking to the left and caught it in the side view mirror, I'd have lost that gun. Damn. So I turned around and came back, and you know it was in a case, so it really wasn't hurt. But, but yeah, it's like uh, when you're loading no, you, up your. You have never told me that. Now, when you're loading up your vehicle, never set shit on the roof. Oh, dude, I saw one the other day. Um... Uh, it's not gun related, but there was a girl. She's driving down the road. She's got her window open. They're not going that fast, obviously. And they're, her friends are talking to her. And there's a big, like a big gulp or something on top of her car. And they're like, your drink's on your roof. What? Your drink's on your roof. Stop. <laughs> and she's like, what? And like, she's like, oh, I guess they want me to stop. And so their windows are down. She stops. The big gulp tips over and runs and splashes all into her vehicle like oh. the entire thing <laughs> <laughs> well you know if um you know like if you watch uh you know auto racing they always talk about drafting and all that yeah and the, you know and if you watch like cars in a wind tunnel how the wind goes you know over them uh, on more than one occasion, I've set a like a can of beer or a can of Coke on the uh, rear bumper of my truck, 
and drove quite a distance. And when I get home, it's still sitting there. I've had that happen with brass on my bumper. Yeah. Yeah. I've had brass from the range mm-hmm. on my bumper for some reason, and I'll get back to the armory, and yeah. it's still there. Yeah. I was like, yeah. oh, shit, how's that? how did that stay there You know, on the highway? It's because of the, uh, the way the wind cuts your vehicle and comes around to the back. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's – and I'm, I'm sure – Anyone who's got a pickup truck probably has experienced something like that in one way, shape, or form before. Hey, um, <clears throat> have you ever bought anything off Arms List? Oh, uh, God, years ago, yeah. Yeah, um, Arms List is interesting. Um, I, I, I check Arms List, uh, I wouldn't say frequently, but I would say regularly. Like, I'm probably on Arms List at least once a month. Um. Uh, you know, I'll check regional stuff or I'll check if there's something that we're looking for. Maybe we'll find it really far away on an arms list ad and we'll contact the person and see if they're willing to, you know, ship something our way. Or, you know, a lot of a lot of people on arms list basically say no shipping face to face. But if you're able to basically, you know, lift your dress and show them who you are, that you're like a real person and you're not some scammer in Nigeria, they'll, they'll generally do business, at least with us. Well, arms list has a huge problem. Arms list is uh, it's full of scammers. Oh yeah, um, it's full of scammers. It's yes. full of scammers. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to say I'm not going to say who it is, but um, I remember talking to a guy, uh, a law enforcement officer, and uh, he was saying something about he was he bought he's buying something off of arms list, and I literally stopped and I looked at him and I was like, dude, you got to fucking be careful on arms list. Those motherfuckers, it's all scams. And he was like, you think I don't run these people? (laughs) (laughs) It's like, well, you can't officially do that. So, But like, you know, if he buys something off somebody at arms list, he's done an NCIC check on your (laughs) shit. So, you know, he knows where you live. He probably knows what you look like. He probably has your driver's license. You know, whether you like, hey, can you show you show you my ID? And, you know, like, hey, it's I'm real. I have a gun permit or this is whatever. It's like, "Ah, that's all right. Yeah. I've already seen it. <laughs> so, yeah. But uh, Arms List has changed the policy. They're apparently now no more free accounts on Arms List. Um, it's now a monthly fee. I don't think it's much. I think it's a do- a couple dollars. Yeah. But um, there's a, there's a a lot of the a lot of the uh, the blue check marks of the gun world are all complaining that quote Arms List is committing suicide and or they're saying it has something to do with Arms List being sued. Uh, for one of these shootings, because I think one of, I can't remember which one it was, but one of these people bought something off arms list, and mm-hmm. they're being sued. And I was like, no, I think, honestly, I don't think it's arms list caving caving to, um, you know, the man. I think it's arms list trying to clean up their listings. Yeah. Because a lot of people, will ju- they won't spend money. It's Sk- like having, it's Sk- like having a, a door charge at a bar. Yeah. Well, yeah, and, and the other the other part of that is if you're a scammer, you know, and you give them, you know, fake information on a free account, that's one thing. But if you've got to pay a monthly fee, that means you've got to give them a debit or a credit card. Mm-hmm. And you can't, you know, you can't give them a, uh, a uh, you know, even if you give them, you know. Uh, a green dot uh, card or something. You know, but still, the, at the end of the day, um it just it's you're just that closer to being trackable mm-hmm. you know um and and on top of that a lot of scammers um they they're not going to pay a monthly fee they're not paying nothing well because what most people don't really understand is scammers are typically managing hundreds and hundreds of listings on on, mo- on multi- people who engage in scams are kind of like people who fish they throw out a ton of lines, mm-hmm. and if you know they're on they're on eBay, they're on Amazon, they're on Alibaba, they're on Arms List, they're on Gun Broker, you know they're on you know, wherever, and so if, if they have to keep it all straight, and having to keep it paid, and keep track of like, well you know oh you had to give a green dot you know well, they, there's fake credit cards and debit cards. You only got so many, you know what I mean, and like yeah. you can't. It's they can't. They generally it makes it a lot harder for them to uh, to keep up. So I mean, I honestly, I was like, good for Arms List. I might make it a little bit better to um, 
to uh, you know to actually buy stuff on there. Because here's the truth is a lot of the listings on arms arms list are fake. And what the scammers do is they get on gun broker, they copy the pictures off a of gun broker, and they put them on arms list. And that's why people didn't understand this years ago. If you uploaded pictures to arms list or you uploaded pictures to gun broker, you would see a watermark in the picture that said gun broker or arms list. The reason they did that years ago was try to keep scammers from taking pictures from different sources and using them on different websites. And this is just a continuation of that battle. Yeah. You know, they're always trying to get ahead of the scammer. So arms list is, you know, arms <clears throat> list might be a little bit better. So we just have to, uh, you know, just have to see how it goes. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, I don't have a problem with, uh, you know, paying a monthly fee if I'm, uh, if I'm moving guns, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I mean, if I have one gun I'm going to sell, will I sign up for an account and pay a monthly fee just to sell one gun? Probably not. No. But, um, but you know, yeah, if I was a, a dealer or whatever, or if I had a gun store and I was, you know, and, and I know, I know uh, one of our local gun stores around here takes a lot of, <clears throat> not the one that you do the secondhand showcase at, but one of the local ones by my house, uh, a lot of the guns in his showcase he puts on, uh, like, Gun Broker. Uh, uh, well, I noticed um, a lot of gun stores, I think they do it more with Arms List. Um, and uh, some of the bigger ones will do it with Gun Broker. But I've noticed, like, very, very small FFLs, like, really small. Like, you know, they're you know, not really making any money. If they yeah. have an online, if they want to sell guns online... They will literally use Arms List as an online website because you can get on Arms List and you can create, I think, a store. Yeah. And then basically you just put your inventory on Arms List, and so even if you have a web, like even if that even if that FFL has a website, if they're broke, a lot of times they'll just have a page or maybe a Facebook page, and mm -hmm. it'll be like click the CR inventory, and you click the link, and it just boom goes to Arms List. And there's an arms list listing there, and you can you know purchase or contact or look at inventory through there, and it's it's a cheap kind of almost getaway to to be online with guns and, and, and it's kind and, of, it's kind and of what arms list I, is though. If I'm not mistaken though, if you set up an arms list store, there is a monthly fee involved you know, with that. Kind of like <clears throat> if you set up um, what I I don't know if Facebook still has it, but they used to have like. Facebook stores and stuff, or maybe it's an e. Oh no, I'm sorry. eBay. I'm losing you. I think you. Uh, are you there? You um, you just died. Are you there? You're coming. You, yeah, I'm here. Okay. So I, what? I was talking. You just, just kind of went away. Yeah, you uh, you just dropped for like five seconds. So. I'll get it. I'll uh, I was to, sitting there to. just okay. I was sitting there talking, and you all, all I heard was say, "Are you there?" <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, but um, ahead. but no, no. Uh, uh, eBay has a store, and I mean, they always had it for like you know dealers and stuff. And there was a monthly fee involved with that. Um, and I'm sure Arms List. If if you're a uh, you know a uh, you know if you have a gun shop and you want to have, uh, you know, a uh, online store for uh, arms list. I'm sure there was probably a monthly fee involved with that as well. It might have been small, but, you know. Yeah, so to those guys, to those guys, uh, them charging a monthly fee for every member is no big deal. Yeah, I think people who complain about arms list charging a few bucks are the same people that get on the, uh, <clears throat> that get onto the app stores and complain that uh, every app isn't free, and it's like, um, yeah. Why would this person write this program if uh, you're not going to make any money? I don't understand. How is this supposed to work? Yeah. Like, you know, it's well, like, how it's supposed to work is they're supposed to get your shit for free. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, everybody you wants know. it. They, you know, everybody wants everything. For, you know, it's like because they're kind of they're kind of dicks about it. So, well, I'll tell you what. I don't want to go crazy long on this one because it's still early. It's about seven forty in the morning and. I've got to still work out this morning and you know hit the gym before you know everything gets crazy, but yep. um, I want to a cup cover a couple of things. Um, I want to I want to ask your opinion on who you think if you, the election were held today, 
who's going to win the election. I want your, I'm going to give your opinion and my opinion. Um, I, I want to tell, I want to cover two quick stories to give Donald Trump credit where the media did not do, they did a disservice to the public. And then I want to give our police blotter end of our police blotter story, which also ties into 2020. So, um, I I guess the first thing is I'm going to cover the, uh, the Donald Trump stuff. So, um, the first one is, do you remember a story, uh, like, I don't know, it was a couple years ago where, uh, word had gotten out. Somebody had leaked cables, like the uh, the the United the, Eng- the United Kingdom's ambassador to the U.S. basically had was basically telling people back in England that you know all this nasty shit about the president, and like, and it caused this big drama. And you know, do you remember it? It was it was a no. it was a tempest in a teapot there for like you know it was it was another example of how. Um, you know, how Donald Trump sucks and norms and we're an embarrassment to the world. And like, you know, the media ran with this for a while and it was, you know, like supposedly they somehow this is Trump's fault. Yeah, well, I don't rem- I don't recall the story, but we covered it. it. It was, you know, that so much has happened in, you know, this especially since 2020. It hasn't really gotten, you know, hasn't gotten a, a lot of a, a lot of uh, coverage. Well, there's an update to the story. It just happened to be released last week. And the media didn't really do a big thing on it. So <clears throat> what really happened is the, U- the United States or the UK's ambassador to the US, who's part of the, you know, like, you know, UK's on the U- uh, UN Security Council, the Five Eyes uh, intelligence ser- uh, sharing, you know, uh, groups. And, and so what was happening was, the United States was engaging in some diplomatic shit around the world, like in particular North Korea. Like we, they had told like some of the close allies. By the way, Secretary Pompeo is going to go visit Kim Jong Un. This is before Trump had all of his meetings with Kim. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, there's this reporter in Washington D.C. named Michelle Kos- Kosinski, K O S I N S K I, I believe. Um, she's. 40 maybe 40 ish okay. attractive girl not not and a rookie but, but not, not, a, not yeah not a rookie but not a not a not a tier one you know she's not an operator she's yeah. you know she's you know she's green beret not not delta force yeah. so um she this is a secret stuff these are secret negotiations secret meetings pompeo's going around you know she writes a story she's got the whole story and the only people that the Trump administration has told were some allies. You know, hey, by the way, we're going to engage in some certain things. And it's like, who the fuck? You know, who the, f- you know, this is when the Trump campaign or the Trump White House was dealing with a lot of, uh, a lot of the leaking issues. So, yeah. You know, like leaks out of the West Wing and links out of the White House. Yeah. Okay. And it's like, okay. And then there was like another story about something else, maybe with, I don't know, another Korean story, maybe a Korean story. And Michelle. Kozinski, she's got another fucking full blown. She's got the only story. And here's the thing: you start looking around. They're like, "How is this girl getting the story?" And she's not. She's not um, uh, uh, the woman from 60 Minutes, Leslie Stahl. She's not Tucker Carlson. She's not. Uh, insert whether you know. She's not Rachel Maddow. She's not Tucker Carlson. She's not Chris Wallace. She's not. Insert your big time. You, you know, she's kind yeah. of like, you know, it's like, it doesn't make sense. It's like, what the fuck? And so they start, they're like, they figure out that the UK ambassador is fucking Michelle Kozinski from, uh, I don't know, at the time she was CBS or NBC or whatever. So here's hello, the thing. Talk. Oh, yeah. And so he's given her information and she's doing to advance her career. He's the UK ambassador's in his sixties, seventies. She's young. They're all married. Like she's married, he's married. It's all this stuff. So it. So anyway, the UK ambassador ends up. This was a couple years ago. He ends up going back to England. Trump came out and like they asked him at a press conference, and um, they uh, you know, like something something UK ambassador. And Trump actually said, he goes, 
this guy did a he this guy did a, a you know he did a disservice to England. He did all this stuff, all that. I, I could say more. I could say really bad things about him, but I'm not going to because Trump knew that he was fucking this chick, yeah. and the media made it sound like that Donald Trump was you know somehow destroying diplomacy around the world. This was years ago. Well, it's it's come out that Michelle Kokosinski and uh, this ambassador were having an affair. The White House, the U.S. government figured out. They contacted the British government, and they're like, "Your your dude is fucking a chick over here. He's a senior diplomat with high level security clearance. And if we figured out, the Russians have probably figured out. The Chinese have probably figured it out. They're already. This is this is a blackmail nightmare, security nightmare. <laughs> Quietly call this guy home, and let's not embarrass everybody." And that's what they did, and they hung that around Donald Trump's neck a couple years ago. The Leslie saw the mainstream media, and he will not get credit for this. But here's the circle round for you. This is for everybody who's listened to this podcast, and you're like, why the fuck is Marky going on and on about these fucking people that I don't care about? Because you know this girl. Everybody knows this fucking girl, and this is true. This is proof that Apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Do you remember Freeze? This was hilarious. It was embarrassing. There was a news, there was a hurricane. You know, somewhere in the U.S., like, you know, oh my God, the hurricane and like the flooding and the storm. And, you know, everybody's trying, the people have evacuated. And there's this girl, she's sitting in a canoe and she's talking and she's paddling in the canoe on a live shot. Like she's in deep water, and two people walk in front of her on the uh, on the on the shot on live television. <laughs> do you uh, remember yeah. this? <clears throat> I do. Turns out she was in two inches of water. Yeah, that is Michelle Kokosinski. Nice. Boom. Nice. Uh huh. This <laughs> is who these fucking people are. And yeah. the thing is, what I don't like about the story is this is another example of I guarantee you. I guarantee motherfucking to you that everybody in fucking Washington knew this years ago or a couple when this happened. Yeah. They didn't tell us. This is yeah. just like the fucking Biden thing. Yeah. Everybody in fucking Washington knew about Biden in China, Biden in Ukraine, Biden in the horse, Biden in the coke. But they didn't tell us, but they all fucking knew. Just like Jeffrey motherfucking Epstein out there in goddamn California, they all fucking knew. But they all want to tell us that we're sons of bitches and we're immoral and we're raping women and me too and all this shit. Yeah. You know, it, that's what, that's the story. And the, so, the you know, so Miss Canoe Girl has finally gotten her comeuppance here. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well. So I just thought that was, I just thought that was a great thing. And so um, as of today, if the election <laughs> were held today, who do you think wins, Trump or Biden? Trump. I think Trump wins too. I mean, I, I just, I honestly don't, I I mean, I know the polls, the national polls have Biden ahead uh, a little bit right now, but I'm, I'm, I just don't see it. I, I'm not seeing it. And, and that's not just me being a, you know, a Trump supporter, which I am. Um, I, I'm just not seeing it. I mean, if you look in all these different states that he has to win, to win the election, he's doing well in them, and the people like him. Here's yeah. my analysis. I think Trump wins, and here's what I know, and then this is what I can surmise. I know the polls for Ohio were wrong. I feel, well, I mean, I don't know, because I feel they're, I mean, look, I, a fucking two weeks from now, I'm like the chick in the canoe fucking wrong, but I'm on, yeah. you know, I'm on public, yeah. you know, but there, I, Trump, Biden's not winning Ohio, and here's the thing. Uh, uh, Trump, he wins Florida, he wins Ohio. People down in North Carolina, they're all saying that it's trending towards Trump. People up in uh, Michigan are saying that it's trending towards Trump. Uh, if Trump wins Florida, North Carolina, Ohio, and Michigan, hopefully that's enough that we don't need Pennsylvania. Because I think the Democrats will steal Pennsylvania. I don't they, think unless it's a unless it's a blowout. But if it's actually within a couple points, there's enough shenanigans going on in Pennsylvania. That's the entire reason why they chose Biden 
because they wanted to win or lose in Pennsylvania. That's the whole yeah. ball of wax. So, but if Trump is truly going to win Florida, North Carolina, Ohio, and Michigan, and you know maybe I don't know, carries Arizona, maybe maybe I don't know was uh, Wisconsin or one of those places up there. But you know, I okay, think he, I think he could pull it out. I think so. And this is what I base most of my uh, my conjecture on, on right now. Okay, Trump holds a rally. There's tons of people there. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a COVID spike because there's, you know, 3,000 people there without masks. You know, mm-hmm. that's a Trump rally. Sure. Okay, Biden and Harris, I think it was Arizona a couple weeks ago, showed up to a rally and no one showed up to the rally other than the staffers okay Mm -hmm. Okay. uh biden a week or so ago has a rally here in cincinnati yeah there was there was biden supporters there but there was so many trump supporters they they were chanting you know trump usa and all this shit drowning out his speech there was a biden rally in cincinnati yeah about a week week and a half ago i swear i my hand to god i swear i had no idea yeah um and and the Biden, you couldn't, you couldn't even hear uh, Biden's uh, speech because the Trump supporters that showed up drowned. They they were just drowning him out. And if Biden shows up for a rally, he has no people show up. I mean, you know, if he gets a couple hundred people, that's a big deal for Joe. If Trump has a couple hundred people show up at his rally, he's lost. I mean, yeah. you know, it's it's look at the numbers. I mean, you know, hell, this uh, Saturday, uh, the Trump supporters shut down two seventy five, basically for the second time. The I mean the the rallies and the people that show up, it's definitely a leading indicator of just what we're looking at. So um, yeah, I so mean, here, I'm going to give the police blotter story. Okay. Of uh, uh, and it's also topical for 2020. So Joe Biden's family. Um, not only has a problem with um, with uh, Hunter Biden uh, snorting coke and whatever the hell, all the nonsense he's involved in, because apparently it's really bad. Did you hear about Joe Biden's niece? Uh, no. No, I did Joe not. Joe Biden's niece sentenced in $110,000 credit card case. Okay. New York City, she took somebody's credit card and char- for a year, Caroline Biden, 31, used an unidentified victim's Chase credit card at Bigelow's Pharmacy. Now, here's a couple questions here. Um, what the hell are you buying at a pharmacy for $100,000 over a year? C2s. Controlled drugs. Norco, Percocet. Percocet. Yeah, I mean, that's it, it does. Like, it does, but she probably has, <clears throat> she probably has a dope doctor pain management guy who writes her prescriptions. There's a lot of them out there. Um, I know of one that a uh, a dope doctor here on the West side that does that. He's a pain management guy. And I mean, you know, he'll write prescriptions uh, for, you know, 350 Percocet. It's like, how the hell, you know, I'm not, you know, but, but, you know. Honestly, is 350 Percocet a lot? uh, Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. A month, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, you know, I mean, he writes for ungodly numbers, and so um, basically, he's going to get a visit from the from the drug police here for two. Oh, months. he he has, but you know, it's 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 hard. Yeah. The way the system's set up, he he uh-huh. he has had several visits, mm-hmm. but you know, as long as he follows the the rules even though he may be like you know touching the gray line as long as he follow the rules he'll the 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 dea won't pull his license sounds like a real sweetheart of a guy well this oh, wraps yeah. up episode 190 of the john 1911 podcast if you want to see stories or pictures of links of anything we discussed you can go to our website john 1911.com that's j-o-h-n 1911.com Remember, it's all about shooting guns and having fun. And dope doctors, everybody, have a good day. See you later. (laughs) Okay.